I am 29 and my wife is 28. The first time I met my wife was in a college psychology class. I was sitting in the front and even challenged the professor a couple of times. It was her energy that drew me in. She was always the one with plans on a Friday night while I would have been content sitting at home watching a game or reading a book. We were opposites in every sense of the word. And yet, something clicked. After four years of dating, we got married and it felt like we were on track to build a great life together. Two years into our marriage I started noticing changes. The department store that I ran was an inheritance from my dad. It was an old-fashioned place that sold everything, from clothes to kitchen gadgets. But times were changing, big chains were moving in and my store was falling behind. The stress was getting to me. Sleepless nights became the norm as I pondered over ledgers, sales numbers, and ways to pull in more customers. My wife knew about the stress I was under, but we were like two ships passing in the night, each stuck in our own struggles. She was a certified nursing assistant at a busy hospital. The shifts were long and the work was taxing. The hospital was always packed and she had to deal with all sorts of challenges, unpredictable patients, demanding doctors, and an ever-pressing workload. But despite all of that, she seemed to manage her stress well, or at least that's the way it seemed. To let off steam, she began going out more frequently with her friends. Girls' night out, they called it. These outings started off as occasional Friday night plans, but they soon became more regular. It was like a ritual. Every week, she'd head out to the newest hotspots in Los Angeles. Bars, clubs, high-end restaurants, you name it. They'd been there. At first, I didn't mind. I thought, hey, we all need our space. She's unwinding, and that's important. Plus, it gave me time to catch up on the work I had been neglecting. But what really started annoying at me was her increased activity on her phone. She was always pretty active on social media, but this was different. She started spending an unusual amount of time on Snapchat and some other new apps I wasn't even aware of. These apps had more secretive messaging options, the kind that left no trace. I didn't want to be the paranoid husband, but one night I finally asked why the new apps. Why not just text your friends like you used to? She looked at me, but didn't respond, letting the question hang in the air, making me suspicious. From that point on, my gut kept telling me something was off, but I had no concrete evidence. It was just a feeling, a nagging intuition I couldn't shake. I tried to dismiss it, told myself I was being silly, but deep down I knew something was wrong. And that feeling, that unsettling emotion, was the only beginning of a long, rocky journey. I had one friend I could confide in, Brian. We have been friends since high school, and our friendship has stayed in place. We were also teammates on the football team. He knows me better than anyone, so when he noticed that I was a bit off, he called me out on it. We met at our usual hangout, a modest sports bar. I told Brian my concerns. He came back with, Well, have you considered that maybe she is taking her mind off things? You're not the only one with stress, you know, he suggested. Brian seemed to think she was just unwinding and letting loose or planning something for me. And yes, our anniversary was right around the corner. The thought made me want to believe that everything was okay, that I was just being paranoid. That glimmer of hope made the next few days a bit more bearable. I even started looking the ways I could surprise her in return. Maybe a weekend trip up the coast or a romantic dinner at that French restaurant she'd been talking about. But as the days passed, that suspicious feeling I had didn't go away. If anything, it intensified. The department store wasn't getting any better. And to top it off, my wife announced yet another girl's night out. This time, however, my curiosity and anxiety had reached a tipping point, so I went to the computer we shared, checked emails and checked her browsing history, and I didn't find anything suspicious. My wife got home about 3.31 in the morning. I went off and demanded what was happening with her. We got into a huge fight, which didn't accomplish anything. The next day, I left for work without saying anything to her. She sent me a text apologizing for her behavior and promised to make it up to me. I was still angry and didn't respond to her. Then she followed up with another text asking me to forgive her. I still hesitated in responding to her, but I forgave her. But in the back of my mind, she was not off the hook. When I got home that evening from work, she had dinner ready. I know most of us would be like, okay, she is making this up to me, nice, but I didn't feel that way. Why? Because every time we have had arguments in the past, she has never done this. Again, it made me suspicious. I went along with it. After dinner, we watched a movie and fooled around later then went to bed. This behavior of hers went on for another two weeks. One night we were home, and we were both standing in the kitchen and her phone was on the counter. It went off. It was a notification from Snapchat. I reached for it, but my wife grabbed it so fast it felt like I was just too slow. I looked at her with my eyes wide. She left the house after that and her actions solidified my suspicions. She was doing something, but I had no proof that she did anything wrong. But that would change. Fast forward a few days. And while I was at work, I was scrolling through TikTok, looking at all the small clips. Suddenly I came across a clip where a woman was kissing a guy. It looked like a bachelorette party, and that's when I saw it. My wife in the background kissing a guy, his junk swinging everywhere. 
He looked like he was a stripper. While my wife was kissing him, other women were touching him. I was devastated, but I had to keep my composure. I downloaded the TikTok video onto my phone. After work, I didn't go home, and I asked my friend Brian to meet me at our usual hangout spot. When I got to the bar, I showed him the TikTok video and pointed at my wife. He was just as devastated as I was. The first thing he said to me was get rid of her. When I got home after meeting Brian, my wife was already home, still in our scripts. I didn't say anything to her. Didn't even greet her. She noticed that and tried to kiss me. I backed away and told her I was coming down with the cold. That night I slept in the guest bedroom without saying anything to my wife. The next day I paid a visit to a divorce attorney and set everything in motion. After work, my wife wasn't home yet. So I started packing some things little by little, putting them in the trunk of my car so my wife wouldn't see that I was packing. Fast forward a few days my wife was working a 12-hour shift on this day I moved out of the house we were renting. Our lease was up in two months and I wouldn't pay any more of her bills. Well to my surprise my wife didn't blow up my phone but I assumed she was home after 8pm her 12-hour shifts are usually 7am to 7pm. But I found out she had to stay later. When my wife finally got home, she blew up my phone, asking where was all my stuff. Where am I? I never responded to her. But she caught up with me at work. All paranoid and SHT, tried to make a scene in front of the other two employees. I grabbed her by her arm and took her into the break room. I took out my phone and showed her the video. Before she could open her mouth, I told her I had already filed for divorce. We didn't need to discuss anything else. She started crying, asking for another chance. And I said, no, there is no chance of that happening. About six weeks later, we had the divorce hearing and it was pretty cut and dry. We were married for under three years. She tried to get alimony, but the longevity of the marriage wasn't there for her to qualify. Even after the divorce, my ex-wife tried to get back with me and she even came to where I worked a few times and brought me lunch. I ate the food, but that was as far as it went. But when she saw that I wasn't budging, she stopped trying. I wanted to expose her, but I didn't only because she didn't do anything stupid or try to switch the narrative. About seven months after the divorce, my ex-wife was assaulted. She went on one of these girls' nights and some guy bought her a drink. He must have slipped something in it like Rohypnol. Luckily for her, she made it out alive. We have chatted a few times and her whole outlook has changed. She doesn't do girls nice as much anymore, only because of that terrifying incident. I have since started dating sparingly, not rushing into anything. I don't think I will ever get married again after this.